So we've we've gone through an introduction of of, of quality and operation in the context of operations management, and talked about some of the tools that are available for operations managers to to manage quality. And one of the ones we talked about was statistical process control, which is sort of a rigorous tracking metric that allows us to evaluate whether we are meeting uh, our expectations in terms of producing products or services or whether we are out of control, if you will. And there are two types of measures. Uh, there are variables uh, and there are attributes. And, and in this video, we're going to talk about sort of developing statistical process control charts for variables. And variables are continuous measures. They are things like weight, speed, length, strength, things that, that uh, can, can, can be anywhere on the spectrum. They can, they can take a range of values. Attributes are more binary, good, bad, pass, fail, and they have a different set of statistical process control charts. So for this thing, the first, uh, the first decision you have to make is, do I have a variable or do I have an attribute? And for students of operations management, this is probably the place that they go wrong the most frequently. So variables are continuous. Take a look at what you measure you have, and then you'll decide which type of control chart you're developed. So, we have X bar charts are to control the central tendency of the process. So they, they sort of say, what's, what's the middle of the chart? What do we want to, uh, what do we want to, uh, uh, where do we want to go? And then we'll set limits around that. And our charts are to, are to control the dispersion of the process. And so they, they measure the variability and, and think for, Think for a second why you might need to consider both of those. If I have, um, if I draw three samples, one is at nine, one is at 10, and one is at 11, the average of that is 10. And so central tendency is 10, uh, the other two are relatively close. If I drew three different samples, one at zero, one at 10, and one at 20, the average of those would still be 10, but I would have considerable more variability and perhaps even unacceptable variability. Uh, so I have to look at, at within my sample, the variation, but also the average. So that's why we have both X bar charts and R charts. So let's explore a little bit how we do those. There are really two kinds of uh, X charts. Uh, there are X charts for when we know the standard deviation of the population. So that is, uh, and, and usually if you're an operator, I mean, you can go measure it, but it's also something that you, uh, if you're an operations uh, management student, you'll be given. Uh, and then your upper control limit for X bar. So X, X is, the, uh, is the average. And so the upper control limit of an X bar chart is X bar bar, which is the average of the averages. And I'll show you an example in a second, plus Z, which is a standard normal deviate. Uh, usually for a three sigma chart, we use uh, three here. Uh, and sigma X bar is the standard deviation of the sample means. So, uh, X bar bar, we said, is the sample means or target value for the process. So X is the mean of the means, and it's the central. That's that's sort of the target, and the control limits are on either side of it. So we add Z plus the standard deviation of X bar, or we subtract it. So we have a symmetric set of control limits around uh, our mean. So here is, uh, we have a... Uh, uh, standard deviation of one uh, here, uh, but we take a sample within, so within the process. So in hour one of the process, we take a sample, we take nine samples and we take the mean of that sample. So we recognize that there's going to be some variation. We recognize that we have those natural variation, uh, 
And, and what we're looking for is sort of assignable causes or unexpected variation. So we, so we take a sample and then we take the average of that sample. And then uh, we do that for several hours, for 12 hours. And you can see we get some variability around here. And so we then go, okay, we want, uh, Z is usually chosen or given to you. Uh, and, and so you have an upper control limit of X bar bar, which is the average of the averages. So we take nine samples every hour and we come up with an average. Then we take an average of the averages, which is 16, plus Z, which we're given is equal to three, times the standard deviation of the sample, which is, if we remember the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size, which was nine. So we have three, which is Z, times one over three, which is the square root of nine. So our upper control limit is 17. Our lower control limit is 15 grams. And that then gives us the parameters within which we measure. So we can then draw those on a chart uh, and, and we, can see, we can see upper control limit, lower control limit. We have some samples that are below the lower control limit. We have a sample that is above the lower control limit. We know that things that are within the boundaries within the control limits are natural variation to natural causes. Those are things that we expect and we're willing to accept. But here, at, sorry, here and here we have something going on and, and we should look for it. So those are then a, 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 the, a, a process that is out of control and we would want to look at and, and determine why uh, that is happening. So we establish the control limits, we track the new observations, we, we establish control limits, we, we, we track observations over time and look for times when we are out of, out of control. So if we don't know the standard deviation of the process, then we have two different kinds of charts. Uh, we have uh, the X bar chart, which we're going to talk about, which is the same. We have X bar bar, uh, which is uh, the average of the averages. And I will, I, I will put up a second video that shows uh, exactly calculate some examples by hand, but this is introducing the concept. A2 is a, uh, uh, is a, is a factor based on the size of the sample that you're taking. Uh, and it's, there's a table in most operations textbooks. You can find uh, the X bar table also online if you're looking for it. But uh, you look A2 is just a factor that you would use. And R bar uh, is the average range of the samples. So uh, when you, let me see, I think I have an example coming up here. So. Uh, You have sample size n. Oh, this is the control chart factor, right? So here's A2. For the range, we, we also have D3 and D4. I'll show you that for a second, in a second. So you have n from, depending on the size of the sample. So this is not the number of times you draw samples. Remember that example, we drew nine samples for 12 hours. In that case, n would have been equal to 9. So you pick n. This is the second big place that students go wrong is, is determining the sample size. And the sample size isn't the number of times you take samples. It is the number of samples you take each time. So uh, that gives you the factors. Those tables are all over the place um, in the text, in the text, in, in almost all operations textbooks or anything that discusses statistic process control. So the range is, so if I have a sample uh, where I draw, 
a sampling occasion where I draw three samples. I'll use my 9, 10, 11 exa example again. So I draw three, so my, my n would be equal to three. Uh, my average would be 10, 9, 10, 11, and my range would be two. It is the difference between the biggest value and the smallest value would be your range. And then our bar is the average of the range. So here is an example. We have a process average that is 12. We have a range, the average, that is 0.25, and we have a sample size n, in that circumstance, 12 plus 0.577 is that value of A2 from the table, and 0.25 is our bar. So our upper control limit would be 12.144 liters, and then our lower control limit would be about 11.5. Uh, five, six liters. So it, the, the only difference is plus and minus. So we, we determine the process average, we determine the average range, we know the sample size, and then uh, executing the formula becomes a relatively straightforward process. As I said, uh, the, the lower control limit is, uh, I, I did the math incorrect in my head, but you, you, you understand what I did. So we have a mean, the center of the control chart, and we have an upper control limit and a lower control limit. And not every occasion needs to fall within that, but the average of every occasion needs to fall within those limits. Then we look at the R chart. The R chart is uh, where we look at the variability. We look at differences in range over time. And as I said, uh, while we would have the first time we took a sample, we had 11, uh, 10, and 9, and our average was 10, so X bar would be nicely within that range. And then we had 0, 10, and 20. Our average would still be the same, but our range would be much bigger and would likely be out of control. So we need to do both uh, uh, variability and the average, and the R uh, takes a look at variability. So if you look here, uh, if you had this, you're, you're drawing samples here, you're drawing samples here, and, and this is the sort of distribution of those samples, those, the width of that distribution is the same in each occurrence. So the variability isn't changing, but the mean is going up the mean is changing. So if you were plotting that on an X-bar chart, you would see this upward trend. Uh, and even the trend here would cause you some concern. But for sure, when you got to this outlier outside of control, you would say, oh, uh, we need to be looking at what's causing this change in our process. But if you were looking at the R chart at the variability here, uh, you would have uh, no change, things would be looking great. That just highlights that you need to look at both of them. In this circumstance, you're drawing a sample here, and the mean isn't changing, but the variability is changing. Think of my example of moving from uh, 9, 10, 11 to 0, 10, 20. And in that circumstance, your X chart would look completely normal. And your R bar chart would say, oh, look, we're seeing this upward trend and that's causing us some grief. We need to look at why the variability is going up in this circumstance. We need to understand what's happening in the process that we're not getting as consistent a cluster uh, within our sample. So how do we create these control charts? We take samples from the population and compute the appropriate sample statistic. So we, can, we, we either look at ranges or standard deviations and we look at averages. Use the sample statistic to control, uh, to calculate control limits and draw the control chart. Average of averages and range. Uh, and we draw our upper control limits and our lower control limits. We plot the sample results on the control chart and determine the state of the process. We determine if we're in or out of control right now if we're out of control, we look for possible assignable causes and take any indicated actions. So that's where we'd look and say, why are we having 
either a, a variation in our averages or a variation in our variation, uh, you know, a widen, a broadening of our variation, uh, and uh, look for why that's happening and take actions to solve that. And then on an ongoing basis, we continue sampling from the process and reset the control limits when necessary. So if we have a variable, something that's continuous, height, weight, speed, all of those sorts of things, we have an X bar R chart. Uh, and uh, we calculate the average of the averages, calculate our control limits. We look at the range, we calculate the average range. We also calculate the control limits uh, on our range using the tables. And I'll show you in a separate video, a couple of examples of that. Relatively straightforward. The two places people go wrong is determining N, take great care in doing that, and determining whether they have a, a, an attribute or a variable. Otherwise, things are relatively straightforward. Good luck and have a great day.